Hey guys, welcome back. Some of you have asked me to talk a little bit more about the materials that I use. I know it can be a bit confusing with my work because most of my portraits are made with a mixed media technique. So here it is. I'm going to show you my favorite materials of this past year, 2021. And I specify 2021 because I'm a person who is always I'm constantly trying new art supplies. It's kind of like my weakness. <laughs> so by the end of this year, I'm probably going to have to update this list and make a new video like this one. So let's get started. Okay, I will try to make this very straightforward because if I talk about every single art supply that I've tried, this video would take too long, so I'll just share my very, very favorites. Let's start with graphite and charcoal. I can't really say if these graphite pencils are good or not because, to be honest, they are the only ones I've ever tried. Since I can remember, I have been using these, so I don't know. Soon I will try three other brands of professional graphite pencils, so subscribe to not miss out on that. For charcoal, on the other hand, I did try a few different brands when I took a charcoal course last year. And the Faber-Castell sticks and pencils are definitely my favorite so far. Now let's talk about all of these extra supplies that you need when working with these two mediums. In my opinion, none of these stand out except for the Faber-Castell kneaded eraser or kneadable eraser and the Tombow Mono Zero erasers. All of the other things are pretty standard and in my opinion, any brand would do the job equally efficiently. My favorite paper for graphite so far is this one from De La Rowney. And for charcoal, I really like this hot press watercolor paper by Fabriano, especially because you can use it for charcoal in combination with other mediums. Let's move on to colored pencils. My favorites are the Prismacolor Premier and the Caran d'Ache Luminance. In my opinion, these two feel exactly the same. The only difference, as I've said before in other videos, is that the Caran d'Ache have the highest light fastness in the world, and on the other hand, the Prismacolor Premier have really poor light fastness. Now, what is the best paper for colored pencils? So far for me is also this one. I've tried Bristol paper, this Strathmore drawing paper, hot press watercolor paper, and nope. I still prefer the De La Rowney. I recently bought this block from Hannemühle and I'm really excited to try it because it feels and looks exactly the same as the De La Rowney one. Let's talk about watercolor supplies now. To be honest, I'm also a beginner with watercolors, but I have tried a few different supplies so far and I love all of these, but so far, three things stand out for me. The first thing is a ceramic palette. Please do yourself a favor and get one of these. When I started off, I had a, I had a few different plastic palettes and I hated so much the fact that you can't, or at least I couldn't clean them. They always got kind of like stained forever. And with these, I solved that problem. The second thing is this beautiful special effects watercolors. There are a few different brands out there that make similar ones, but oh, I just love these. I need to start using them more. And the third thing that stands out is, yes, the paper. <laughs> As you may know, I have tried so many different types of watercolor paper and hot press watercolor paper is by far my favorite. Now the last medium and the most complicated, no, it's not complicated. I think it's just less known by people in general. So pastels come in many different forms. There are soft pastel sticks, 
hard pastel sticks, pastel pencils, which can be soft, medium or hard, and there are pan pastel colors. For my work, I mainly use the Unison Color Soft Pastel Sticks and the Faber-Castell Pit Pastel Pencils. The best tool for blending pastels is by far your fingers, but I do like to use this brush that is specially designed for soft pastels. Usually I use this brush to lift pastel back up from the paper, so it's a great tool to help you shape your pastel paintings. Now, very important in this medium is paper. In my opinion, paper is a lot more important than, than the pastels. So my two favorite are the velour paper from Hannemühle and the UART premium sanded paper. This one is only for pastels, any form of pastel except pan pastel colors, in my opinion. And this one is for any form of pastels and for mixed media. This paper can take loads and loads of water. And talking about mixed media, to finish this video I want to show you in detail how I've made some of my mixed media artworks. In this first example, the paper that I used is the UART sanded paper. For the background and as a base layer for most of the drawing, I used pan pastel colors. Then for most of the details I used pastel pencils, but the very very last details that I can't really make with pastel pencils, I make with colored pencils. And usually thin black hairs, like for example eyelashes, I make with these pens. They're called pigment liners. But I have to warn you though that this paper will destroy these pens. In this next example, I used exactly the same as in the last one. The only difference is that I used a black marker as a base layer for the hair. I think that if you need to make a base layer for any solid black, using a marker is a lot better than using pan pastels or any other medium, because the marker gets immediately fixed and that way you can prevent smudges and it's easier to layer lighter colors on top. In this third example, I used watercolors as my background and base layer. And then the only medium that I used for the flowers was pastel pencils. So you see, you don't necessarily need to have or use together both pastel pencils and soft pastel sticks. This is another example where I only used pastel pencils for the complete drawing. I did use soft pastel sticks for the background to save some time, but I could have also done it just with the pencils. Now, like I mentioned before, the velour paper is not for mixed media, but at least I don't feel the need of other medium to achieve a great level of detail with it, especially when drawing hair or animal fur. You can also make beautiful mixed media artwork with hot press watercolor paper. For this project, I even used gold leaf for the hair strands and the paper took everything perfectly. Now with colored pencils, you can also use other mediums to make the process a bit quicker. For example, using these white pens for the highlights, it's super practical. This next one I made on pastel mat. I think I haven't given pastel mat a real chance because I only got to try the dark gray color that they have and it didn't work for me when I tried to make a portrait on it, but I remember that the same happened when I tried to make a portrait on black velour paper, so I guess I just have to learn to pick the right paper color depending on my reference. So yes, I have to give this paper a second chance because in this drawing, for example, it worked wonders. I used soft pastel sticks for the base layer, then added some vodka to saturate the whole thing, you know, to make it solid with no texture. You can also use water for this. The only reason I used vodka is that it dries a lot faster. Then for the second layer, which are the lights, I used the soft pastels again without the vodka this time and finally the water drops with black and white Prismacolor pencils. 
and the lightest highlights of each of the drops I made with white pens. With mixed media you really have endless possibilities to get creative and make your process a lot easier and faster.